The US weight loss market alone is estimated to be worth $70 billion in 2018. So much marketing everywhere wants to sell you the magic pill for weight loss. You may be wondering what actually works and what's just a marketing scam. We're a science advocate and we believe science is the most trusted source of information. Let's see what science actually says about weight loss so we can separate the myth from the facts and set ourselves to a healthy weight we can maintain for a lifetime. We will show you how to do it yourself and save yourself tons of money. Let's check out the science and the research-based facts about weight loss. First, we must acknowledge that all living beings need energy to survive and live. So, energy is crucial for our survival. We take energy from food. Food is the only source of energy for us. Food gets converted to energy and delivered to all the body. Our body breaks these down into glucose, which is the easiest fuel for our cells to burn. We're going to call this energy in. The body uses this energy for breathing, circulating blood, maintaining body temperature and many other functions to keep us alive. We're going to call this energy out. So simply, if our intake of energy is equal to our energy out, then we'll maintain our current weight. If energy in but less energy out, we are going to gain weight. If energy in but more energy out, so it's weight loss. This is a simple equation, but as everyone is unique in terms of body weight, level of activities and metabolic rate, it means everyone should tailor their energy intake to their body weight and physical activities, which is going to determine the energy out or in other terms, metabolism. Let's talk about metabolism. Metabolism is the rate at which the body burns calories. Our body burns energy in three different ways. The body burns about 70% of the calories intake for just the basic body functions like breathing, circulating blood, maintaining body temperature brain activities, producing new cells and the rest of the body organs. In other words, just to keep you alive. This is called the basal metabolic rate or BMR. About 20% is for harder physical actions like walking, exercising, running and any other physical chores. We can control this by increasing or decreasing the physical activities. Unless you do vigorous activities on a daily basis, you'll never beat the basal metabolic rate or BMR by just simple exercise. And 10% for just digesting our food. That doesn't mean we're going to burn more if we keep eating all day because this rate won't change and you'll simply end up taking more calories than you need. Now, you may sense that diet is the most important step to maintain healthy weight because if we're going to eat more, then our basal metabolic rate will always end up gaining weight unless you spend hours every day in the gym doing vigorous exercise to burn off those calories. Based on that, your first step is to determine your own basal metabolic rate as it varies from one to another. You get to know how much food your body needs for normal day-to-day -day activities without gaining or losing weight. Now let's see how the body gains weight when the energy we take in is more than the energy we burn out. When we eat carbohydrates, our body breaks it down into glucose, an easy fuel for our cells to burn. If we eat too many calories, our bodies convert the excess glucose into fatty acids and lock them away in the form of fat cells. Body fat is an energy storage system designed for our long-term survival in times of famine. And that's how our body creates fat cells in the first place. The longer we keep having excess food, the more the body will accumulate fat cells and gradually we'll become overweight and obese if we don't stop and turn the table around. As long as we have excess energy from food in our bloodstream, regardless of the form, the fat cells remain untapped and growing. This process of both handling excess carbohydrates in the blood and the inhibition of the breakdown of fat 
is controlled by a complex hormone signaling system, which includes insulin as one of the primary signals. Elevated blood sugar from a meal triggers the release of insulin, which tells our fat cells to hold on to their energy stores and tells our muscles and other tissues to absorb and burn the glucose first. But what happens when the energy we take in is less than the energy we burn out? Once the level of glucose present in the blood drops, insulin levels also drop and the body starts to mobilize energy from your fat cells instead. It's a complex process triggered by a number of hormones and carried out by a system of enzymes and coenzymes, first to unlock the fat cells, then to transport the fatty acids into your cells and finally to break them down into smaller units for consumption. It's important to note that our fat cells will not release the energy stores if insulin is present. So, a diet that keeps your blood sugar stable and in a healthy zone is the way to fat loss. This means avoiding sugar, refined carbohydrates, white flour and many fast digesting packaged foods. Slow digesting whole foods are your diet's best friend. Fat cells are basically made up from water and carbon. Whenever we burn these fuels, carbon and water are released. So, eventually we get rid of the fat cells by breathing them out as CO2 and pee the water out naturally. We take from that to lose weight, the energy you take in as food must not exceed the energy you burn out as basal metabolic rate and physical activities. To lose weight you must get your diet right first, then increase the physical activities to push the body to go to the state of tapping into the fat cells for fuel.